Here we're asked to solve each equation for the indicated variable. Let's start with A, solve for capital B. So I have A plus B plus C equals D. So when this is asking us to solve for B, what it means is to isolate B on one side of the equation and everything else on the other side. So we're gonna use the rules of equality, addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division, the same way that we would if we were getting a numerical result. So let's see what that looks like. So if I want B by itself, currently A and C are attached to B through addition. So what that means is I'm gonna start by subtracting A, and then there's my B. I'm gonna also subtract C, so I'm gonna do two things at once. So this part and this part are what I just put in there. So I have to subtract A and C from both sides of the equation. So the reason I selected to subtract A, A minus A goes to zero. Same thing with C, subtract C because C minus C goes to zero. So I'm left with B equals D minus A minus C. So I don't have a numerical result for B, but what I've done is just rearrange the variables in the equation I was given so that I've isolated B. Let's see what happens in part B here. It says solve for C, four times A times B times C equals 32. So C is right here. It's joined with four AB all through multiplication which means I can divide both sides by 4AB. Divide both sides by 4AB. Leave the C because I want C by itself. So the 4s, the As, and the Bs all are common factors. They divide out. So I'm left with C equals 32 divided by 4AB. Now I can reduce this, 32, over 4, 4 goes into itself one time, 4 goes into 32 eight times. So my final simplified result is C equals 8 divided by A times B. Part C, solve for X, Y equals MX plus B. I want to solve for X, currently attached to X, M through multiplication and B through addition. So I'm gonna start by subtracting B from both sides. And I do that because I want B minus B goes to zero and effectively moves the B to the left-hand side. I now have Y minus B equals MX. I'm solving for X. I can divide both sides by M, just M. So the M's on the right-hand side, that reduces to one. So I'm left with Y minus B over M equals X. Part D, I wanna solve for B in Y equals MX plus B. So B is right here. It's joined through addition to MX. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna subtract MX from both sides. So on the right hand side, mx minus mx plus b. So here's the part that I just did. mx minus mx is zero. So that part goes to zero. So I'm left with y minus mx equals b. So notice part c and d here, I have the same equation, but I can isolate a different variable depending on what I'm asked to do, and the result will be different. Part e, I'm asked to solve for c, given f equals 9 fifths c plus 32. So c is here. I'm gonna start by subtracting 32 from both sides. So f minus 32, equals 9 fifths C. I want C by itself. I have 9 fifths C. 
So what I'm going to do is multiply both sides by 5 ninths. Now watch what I need to do on the left hand side to be sure that 5 ninths is multiplied times all the terms on the left hand side. I put f minus 32 in parentheses. On the right hand side, I kind of lost my equals here, I have 5 ninths times 9 fifths, the nines and the fives, common factors reduced, this just gives me 1c, so what I'm left with is c equals 5 ninths, and there isn't any reason to distribute here, so I'm just going to leave this as c equals 5 ninths times f minus 32. Part f, I'm asked to solve for t inside the equation a equals p plus prt. So t is here. I am going to first subtract p from both sides, and that's because I'm going to first move this p. So that's p minus p plus prt. So p minus p goes to 0, so I'm left with a minus p equals prt. I want to solve for t, currently joined to t, p and r through multiplication, so I can move them through division. So p over p, r over r, those reduce to 1, so I'm left with the final result, a minus p over pr equals t. Now be careful here at the end. Do not cancel out these p's because p is a common factor in the denominator, but it is not a common factor in the numerator. So I cannot reduce this by a factor of p because I don't have a factor of p in the numerator. I only have a factor of p in the second term. So our final result is a minus p divided by pr equals t.